Hello everyone, I'm George Taylor from Imagine Nerding, and on this episode of Parkopedia, we're taking the plunge into the history of water rides. So when you think of water rides, you probably think about log flumes, shoot the chutes, or river rapid rides. And those are the three most popular categories of water rides, but you can also include boat rides, although they may feel more like dark rides. To me, Pirates of the Caribbean is more of a dark ride, and Splash Mountain is more of a log flume, but it can still be a little difficult to categorize some attractions. The first water rides are generally thought to be the Old Mill type of rides. Old Mill started around the mid-1890s, and they were sometimes called river caves. For the Old Mill rides, you would ride in a boat that floated or was propelled through a small channel. There was a large mill wheel or paddle wheel that would actually propel the entire ride using a strong current. You would float past scenes, which would usually be educational or scary, and a lot were based on fables or were travel related. And in the early days, a lot of the figures were made out of wax. Due to the mores of the time, couples weren't supposed to be alone or be physical, at least not without a chaperone. Many of the old mill rides had dark areas that would allow for some kissing or snuggling. And this is how the Tunnel of Love term came into being. And the Tunnels of Love could also have scary moments that would offer a chance for a quick hug. Most of the early mill rides had wooden canals which were prone to leaks. This made them very expensive and only the biggest parks could afford them. Once concrete became more readily available, they were a bit easier to build and maintain. Sadly, there are very few old mill rides left in the world, six at the time of recording this video, with two in the United States, one at Kennywood and one at the Minnesota State Fair. And if you get a chance to ride one, you really should. It is a neat experience. Water toboggans, which are more like slides, would be in existence in the 1890s, and there's actually a photo of one at Cedar Point in 1890. There were others in the mid-1890s, and water toboggans would be still, like I said, more of a water slide than a water ride, though. But it's interesting to know when they developed. Shoot the Shoots have been around since the late 1800s, and could be considered an antecedent to the log flume. Shoot the Shoots are flat bottom boats that slide down a ramp into a lagoon. The boats are usually much larger than a flume ride, and there's usually just one drop. The first Shoot the Shoots was built in 1884 down the side of Watchtower Park in Rock Island, Illinois. It was a greased wooden track that was about 50 feet long. It skipped across the Rock River when it reached the bottom. The builder, J.P. Newberg, took this concept to Chicago, where more of them opened. Paul Boynton opened the first amusement park in America in Chicago in 1894. It was the first park that charged in a general admission and used mechanical rides. The park was called Paul Boynton's Water Chute. Obviously, one of the main draws was the Chute the Chute ride. In 1895, Boynton opened Sea Lion Park at Coney Island. Sea Lion Park was actually the very first gated and fully enclosed amusement park. After that, the Shoot the Shoot rides gained immense popularity and spread all over the country. Most Shoot the Shoot rides used an employee to pull it back up to the top. Some of them even had elevators they used. Modern Shoot rides can be differentiated from log flume based on their seating. Shoots usually seat four to eight people across and typically just offer a ride up a hill and then the drop with a gigantic splash. According to Knott's Berry Farm history, Bud Hurlbutt, a Knott's concessionaire, worked with Aero Development to create the very first log flume ride. Walter Knott liked the idea but didn't want an untested ride on his property. So Hurlbutt sold the ride to Aero, who designed and installed the very first log flume at Six Flags over Texas in 1963. After that, Arrow was asked to install them all over the country. Walter Knott finally agreed to let Hurlbutt install one at Knott's after seeing that they were safe. The Timber Mountain Log Flume was one of the very first themed log flumes. Of course, Splash Mountain is one of the more famous, sure as you're born. So you've heard the story behind the flumes, right? 
Well, there's the story of the mill hands and lumberjacks that would ride the log flumes down the sides of mountains as the flume transported the logs. Sometimes this was for transportation and sometimes it was just to help unjam the logs. In 1875, a reporter traveled to the Lake Tahoe area and did a story on the logging industry. He was invited to ride a flume boat, which was a cutout log, sort of like a canoe. Apparently, they traveled 15 miles in just 35 minutes. They saved a full day of travel that they would have done in a carriage, but they were all injured in some way and swore never to do it again. So the next big change in water rides would be with the premiere of the River Rapids ride, which debuted in 1980 at Astro World in Houston, Texas. It was called Thunderhead and was proposed by the park's general manager and built by Intamin. They've become very popular with more than 20 across the United States alone. Kali River Rapids at Disney's Animal Kingdom is a River Rapids ride. Of course, not every water ride can fit into a neat little box <laughs> or trough. People will argue about Pirates of the Caribbean that it's a modern old mill ride along with It's a Small World. But what about the Jungle Cruise? Is it simply a boat ride, like living with the land? Is Jurassic Park at Universal just a shoot the shoot? You know, and there are also splash battle rides, like the Quest for Chi at Legoland Florida. So what do you think about some of these rides? How would you categorize Pirates of the Caribbean in It's a Small World? And tell me, what's your favorite water ride? Leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I'm George Taylor from Imagine Nerding, and I hope to see you in the parks.